Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to introduce you to a brand new .NET 7 feature coming for the JSON serializer and that is polymorphic serialization and deserialization. This was basically a feature in every other JSON serializer, Newtonsoft had it, I think others had it as well, and we're finally getting it in the native system.txt.json built-in serializer. I think I've never really seen a project where we don't have a message or an event or a DTO that has some form of inheritance and was always very painful to use the built-in JSON serializer. You actually had to hack your way around it to deal with that polymorphism, but now we're finally getting it and I have the preview in front of me to show you exactly how it works. If you like the above content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe or ring the notification bell and for more training, check out nickchapsas.com. All right, let me show you what I have here. I'm going to go ahead and create a new class called points. And I'm going to use points 2D and 3D points in space to represent the problem. In your application, it will most likely be something like you consume a message that the base type is like a customer message or a customer event. And then you might have a customer creator or a customer deleted that inherits from that. And then you maybe have inheritance on top of inheritance and you want to serialize and deserialize JSON objects, but because the built-in JSON serializer doesn't support it, you would lose all that data of the derived type, depending on which type you would use. I'm going to explain everything about the problem now, but first let's create our two classes. So I'm going to have a point 2D object, and then I'm going to have a public class point 3D object. And the idea is that the point 2D can be represented with an X and a Y to be represented in space. So we have a double, x and then we have a double y makes sense and then the point 3d will inherit from point 2d and then it's going to have a z which represents the depth and that's how we represent points in 3d space now let's see the problem in action i'm gonna go here and i'm going to delete that and say console dot right line so the app doesn't exit as i'm stepping through the things and i'm going to say that var point 2d equals and i have a new point in 2D, and I'm going to set uh, a couple of values here. So here we go, X and Y set. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say point 2D as text. And I'm going to say JSON serializer dot serialize, and I'm going to serialize that point 2D. Now, just to make everything explicit, I'm going to use point 2D, the type here to show you. You know that this is also a string, this var, and then what you can do once you serialize something is deserialize it. So you can say point 2D, point 2D again, and then we can say JSON serializer dot deserialize, and we can deserialize based on that object. So point 2D, point 2D as text, basic stuff, and this can't be null. And then what you can also do is have the same thing for 3D. So let me just quickly do that for you. Now, the main difference is this also has uh, a Z value, just some value. Now let's go ahead and debug this and see what's going on. We're going to start debugging it. Here we go. And let's go all the way to the right line here. So we have the 2D point initialized. Then we have the text. And if you see the text over here, X and Y, exactly as you'd expect. And then we get the point back from the deserialization as you'd expect. And the same for the point 2D. So I have all my values here. I have my text over here. And then I have my values over here again. Now, here's where it gets tricky. Because point 3D is technically also a point in 2D, I can do this. I can say point 3D to 2D and then serialize this and then try to deserialize it again. Now, watch what happens when I do that. I'm going to go ahead and start that. And this is point 3D used as point 2D. But when I step over this, it is still technically a point 3D. It's just that I'm using it as a point 2D. But in runtime, as you can see over here, it is still point 3D. Now, when I step over this serialization method call, as you can see, this Z value is lost because the serializer doesn't account for the fact that this truly is a point 3D because I'm using it as a point 2D. And when I try to deserialize it, watch what happens. I am losing the Z value because the serializer never actually dealt with it. This is exactly what .NET 7 solves. This is exactly what .NET 7 solves, and it solves it in a pretty simple way. What you can do is you can say that this is a JSON derived type. So you can come here and say JSON derived type, type of, and that is a type that is inheriting the point 2D, so point 3D in our case. And that is enough to let the serializer know that, hey, this needs to be handled in a special way. So let's go ahead and debug this again over here and see what happens now that I added this attribute. So I'm stepping over this. This is again a point 
3D in here, but a point 2D in type. Now, when I step over this realization, now it keeps that Z value. We still have that. And when I try to deserialize it as a point 3D, I can because it had all that data. Now, this works fine when everything is in runtime, but when you're consuming messages from some other service like RabbitMQ or SQS or maybe a database or something else, there is no discrimination between a point 2D and a point 3D because the thing that's consuming the message or reading from the database doesn't have any info on what this thing is. So if this was coming from somewhere else, you wouldn't know how to deal with this. Well, there is actually a solution for that as well. What you can do now is specify a type discriminator in the form of a string or an integer. So I can say that I want this to have a name point 3D and I can also give a type discriminator to my 2D point with the same exact attribute and say point 2D here. And now what I can do is I can set a breakpoint over here and run everything again. And as you can see, this point 2D text now has this type value over here. This has it and this 3D also has it, meaning that I can actually just copy that text and then pretend that I'm some message that is coming into the system and I can say point 2D, for example, here. So point from network equals JSON serializer dot deserialize the point 3D and then paste the text and escape it, of course. Here we go. And now if I debug this again, Watch what happens. Even though I didn't have this as a runtime thing, this is just a text I received, I can still have it as 0.3D here, even though the type here is 0.2D. So it enables you to do all sorts of things with polymorphism so, so easily with a couple of attributes. Now there's ways to extend this and you can mix and match things. So for example, for 0.2D, you can have two and for 3D, you can have either 0.3D or uh, three, so this will be the type discriminator if you want to save some space in the JSON contract in case it gets too big, or you can have a JSON polymorphic attribute here, and you can specify how to deal with a few other things. For example, when there's an unknown derived type handling, how do you want the application to behave? Do you want a fail serialization? Do you want to go back to base type? Do you want to go back to nearest ancestor? How do you want the system to behave? There's other things as well. For example, you can specify a different type discriminator property name. So if you don't want to have dollar sign type, if you want to have something else, you can do that. And if I debug this again, then as you can see, now the discriminator is pew for some reason. And of course, you can also instruct it to ignore unrecognized type discriminators. So for example, if the value of the type discriminator, that dollar sign uh, type is something it doesn't know how to deal with, you can say ignore it. So it's a much needed, really nice feature that makes the system.text.json serializer even more usable and more competitive compared to the alternatives. And we're gonna see more and more of these features being integrated in. It's just a process because of how many features other things like the JSON.NET library had already. But some of you might be thinking, hey Nick, I have a big domain, I have many contracts, I have much inheritance. I don't want to have attributes here. This is just really not maintainable. I want to encapsulate all that in a single place. Well, they're actually talking about the solution to that as well. Now, this is not as of yet in .NET 7 previews. However, I can show you what the idea that they're going with is. So you should be able at some point to specify your own type resolver, which would be inheriting from the default type resolver. And it would look something like this. You would inherit from the default JSON type info resolver. You'd have the get info method, and then you can check based on the type and specify all that information that we had in that point over here, for example, to have a one for one match, I can just copy this and say point to D and this will give me the exact same experience. I can also specify things like fall back to nearest ancestor and then the type discriminator property name. So all that I can specify in a class and then this will be accounted for from the JSON serializer itself. So it's really nice that they're providing an alternative for that as well because attributes sometimes are a bit hit and miss depending on how many you need to have. But what do you think about this feature and what is the next feature from popular JSON serializers that you want to see integrated in the built-in JSON serializer itself? Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making this video possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.